All you got to do is believe what the scripture says. That's right. All right? And so God is going to do whatever he wants to do. So God sets a plan in motion and he already warns Moses that I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And the word of the Lord said what? And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. I will harden his heart. And multiply. And I will multiply my signs and my, my signs and my wonders. In the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt. See, God is trying to show forth his power. That's right. Amen. And God knew that if there was some resistance that took place, he was going to be able to show his power. That's right. So Pharaoh had to resist the word of God. Amen. In order to make God be Put into action. Amen. All right. Just like the Bible said, these men would resist the truth. Uh-huh. Everybody's not going to accept truth. No. Nope. Amen. Amen. Everybody's not going to accept truth. Some people have to be resistant Amen. in order that God can show forth his power. Amen. Just Amen. like he did with Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm going to do it in order that I might multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt. And the word of the Lord said, What? But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. But Pharaoh will not hearken unto you. That I may lay hand upon Egypt. That I may lay hand upon Egypt. And bring forth mine army. And bring forth my armies. And my people. And my people. The children of Israel. The children of Israel. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. By great judgment. By great judgment. And so God said, I'm going to put my hands on the Egyptians. I'm going to put my hands on the land of Egypt and I'm going to bring my people out of bondage. See, I'm not going to let Pharaoh let them go. I'm going to make him let them go. Amen. Amen. And so God is showing forth this power. And so God is setting forth so people can know that he's God and that he's God by himself and he can do whatever he wants to do. Whatever. Amen. That's right. All right. And so the word of the Lord said what? And the Egyptians shall know, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. When I stretch forth my hand, when I stretch forth Egypt, my hand upon Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel, and I will deliver the children them. of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron, and Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. Them. Did as the Lord commanded. So they did. They. And sometimes you got to do what God says, even when you already know the results. Amen. 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 Moses had already knew that he's going to harden his heart. Yeah. Pharaoh's not going to let the people go, but I'm doing it in order to show forth my power, yeah. and I'm going to deliver the children of Israel. But I still want you to go speak to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Yeah. Isn't it strange that God will still make you speak a word that you know they're not going to receive? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know folks ain't going to hear it, but God says, say it anyway. anyway. You already know that I'm coming, but I want you to be obedient to my word anyway. Amen. 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 Because I'm going to show forth my power. What did the Lord say? What? And Moses was four score years old. And Moses was four score years old. And Aaron four score and three years old. And Aaron was four score and three years old. When they spake unto Pharaoh. When they spoke unto Pharaoh. And the Lord spake unto Moses. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. And unto Aaron. And unto Aaron. Saying. Saying. When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, say, say, show a miracle for you. Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto him. Then you shall say unto him. Take thy rod. Take thy rod. And cast it before Pharaoh. And cast it before Pharaoh. And it shall become a serpent. And it shall become a serpent. And Moses went in unto Pharaoh. Moses went in unto Pharaoh. And did as the Lord had commanded. And did as the Lord has commanded. Uh-huh. Now I want y'all to pay attention to this. Uh-huh. God is going to give them instructions to work a miracle in the midst of Pharaoh. Yeah. All right? They're going to work a miracle in the midst of Pharaoh. God tells him exactly what to do. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm going to tell you. To tell Aaron what to do. Cast down his rod and it's going to be turned into a serpent in front of all the Egyptians. But watch what's going to happen. Uh-huh. And then, word of the Lord said what? And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. So Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. And before his servant. And before his servant. And it became a serpent. And it became a serpent. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men. Now Pharaoh is going to call wise men. And the sorcerers. And the sorcerers. Now the, 
the magicians of Egypt and the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantment. See, see that now he calls forth the wise men and the magicians and and the enchanters and all this good stuff, and he brings them also before Moses and Aaron. And the miracle that Moses and Aaron does by the leading of the Almighty God, the rest of them are going to do too. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. All right, they're going to do the same thing. Yeah. And, and what happened? And they became. For they cast down their rods. Yes. Every man his rod. He threw their rods down. Mm -hmm. And they became serpents. And their rods became serpents. Yes. But Aaron's rod. Now they can duplicate. Uh -huh. yes. They can duplicate. Hallelujah. What God is able to do. Uh -huh. That's why I don't play around with funny and false, false spirits. You know? uh -huh. yeah. Because we, we sometimes in the church we say, well, you know, that's of the devil. That devil ain't got no power. That, that's not true. Right, yeah. he got a lot of power. It's not true. He got power. Yeah. He got power and he can duplicate mm -hmm. what God can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But God will always win. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Always. I say God will always win. Always. Yeah. They can duplicate it, but God will still allow something to transpire to prove that what I just did, this is God. And so what happened after that, brother? When well, they cast down every man in his rod. They cast down their arms. And they became serpents. And their rods became serpents. But Aaron's rod. God let Aaron's rod swallowed up that became a serpent. Uh -huh. Swallow up their serpent. Uh -huh. yeah. So God let his serpent consume their serpent yeah. in order to show you might can duplicate, but you can never overthrow. That's right. Amen. 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 So we see here what transpires. And the word of the Lord said what? And he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. That he hearkened not unto them. And he hearkened not unto them. As the Lord had said. As the Lord had said. Even after God showed them that my power can overpower them, mm -hmm. Pharaoh still would not hearken. Amen. But God already said it will not happen. Amen. He said, Pharaoh is not going to listen. I'm going to harden his heart. All right? But I want y'all to see something that, uh, that is a dilemma in the church today. And the dilemma is that we see almost everybody doing the same stuff. Mm. You know, we see prophecy going forth and we see healing and miracles, signs and wonders, and we automatically equate that to being God. Yeah. Yeah. We automatically say that got to be God. And that's why so many people are tricked today. Because when they see somebody right. going laying hands on somebody and that person got a short leg, and all of a sudden you lay hands on them and that leg pop out, we just say, Oh, that had to be God, that had to be the Holy Ghost. Uh, but, but that spirit knows how to duplicate. Right, right. It knows how to imitate Amen. the power of God. That is why they're called familiar spirits. Familiar, yeah. that's right. Familiar spirits familiarize themselves with people, things, surroundings, and they can duplicate them. You know what I'm talking to mediums? Yeah. And then those mediums come back and say, Oh, you had a brother that died in a car accident and blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, that's my brother. And got all them people do because they think they're really talking to the brother, but in actuality, they're really talking to devils. Yeah. Amen. 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 They're really talking to demons. They have familiarized themselves with humanity. And they can tell you what your grandmother looked like. Your yeah. grandmother was bald headed and used to wear wigs. Yeah. Uh huh. And so therefore, she's standing for me. But what actually they're seeing is a demonic spirit. Amen. 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 And that spirit has familiarized itself with that person. And they're able to deceive. Amen. Amen. Alright? They're able to deceive. That's why the scripture always told us that there were witches and there were warlocks and there were yeah. mediums in that city. He said kill them. Kill them. Because they're sitting there doing stuff that they ought not to be doing. Conjuring up things by another spirit. Alright? But now if you pay attention to the scripture, they did exactly what Moses and Aaron had the ability to do. 
But now, remember in this verse, he never called their names. Amen. Amen. He never said who these magicians were. Mm -hmm. He never said who they were. But Paul gives us insight in Timothy what their names were. Amen. All right? Tell us what their names were. All right? And he said, just like these men withstood Moses, these individuals in our day are going to do the same thing. Yeah. Amen. They're going to do the same thing. They are going to get on the same level as righteous men of God, and they're going to duplicate miracles, signs, and wonders by their own spirits. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, y'all don't believe me? Second Corinthians, the mm. 11th chapter. Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's see what's going to happen. Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Verse number 10. As the truth of Christ is in me, he said that Paul said, as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me. No man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Uh, uh, of this boasting in the region of Achaia. Uh -huh. Hey. Uh-huh. Come on. Wherefore, wherefore, because I love you not, because I love you, therefore, because I love you not. God know it. God know. But what I do, uh -huh, what I do, that I will do. All right. He says, "Wherefore, because I love you not, God know it. But what I do, that I will do. That I will do. That I may cut off that occasions, I may cut off the occasions from them which desire occasions, which desire occasions. That wherein they glory, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. They may be found even as we." For such are false apostles. All right, he said, for such are false apostles. All right, he, he's, he's telling us that there are individuals that are walking around here that are desiring occasion. They're glorying in what they are doing. He said, but we know the truth about these people. Amen. These are false apostles. And what are they? Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Yes. Amen. And what are they doing? Transforming and themselves. They're transforming themselves into the apostles into of Christ. Into the apostles of Christ. They're false apostles. Yeah. They are deceitful workers. But they are transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They're walking around here saying they are of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they're deceitful workers. Amen. They're, Amen. they're deceitful workers. Amen. They're false apostles. Amen. And what happens? And no marvel. But he said, do not marvel. No, no marvel. For Satan himself. For Satan himself is transformed, is transformed into an angel of into light. Into an angel of light. Angel. What good is the devil to come to you as the devil? <laughs> right. Yeah. He can't Amen. deceive you that way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He know if you come to him and say, I am Satan, you're <laughs> not going to follow him. Amen. That's right. Amen. He know if you come and say, I am the devil, worship me. You're not going to worship him. And so therefore the devil is wise enough to know that I must do something in order to get you to follow me. Yeah. Amen. And you know what he does? He transforms himself. Yeah. Amen. He goes through a spiritual conversion. Amen. And brings the name of the Lord. Amen. We're not the only ones that are converting. Amen. 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 We ain't the only one going through a conversion. That's right. Satan himself has transformed. My he has went from one uh, image to another image. Yeah. He's went through a spiritual conversion, but his conversion is not authentic. No. Because his destination is already set. Yeah. For the lake of fire yeah. has been created for the devil and, and his, his angels. angels. Amen. Even though the devil believes that there is one God and tremble, he still can not be saved. Amen. Amen. So now what his duty is, is to transform and to deceive as many people as he possibly can. Amen. So Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. The devil is a master of disguise. Amen. 
Yes, he is. His duty and his job is to transform, to camouflage himself, to duplicate. He wants to be Jesus Christ so bad. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But he cannot be Jesus Christ. Amen. He, he wants to be God so bad, but he cannot be God. Amen. But what he can do is he can transform himself. Amen. He can act like he's what he's not. Amen. He, he can transform himself. And so he transforms himself into an angel of light. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ got a church and Satan got a church too. Amen. 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 That's why we got to be careful. God got a church and Satan got a church. Yes, he Amen. does. The writer of the book of Revelation will say they are the synagogue of Satan. Yes. Amen. Didn't he say so? Yes, he and somebody at the door, he said that he, we, we, he's the synagogue of Satan. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so therefore, there are individuals that are in the synagogue of Satan. Amen. And they're not in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything that God has, the devil has. Yeah. Amen. Jesus got a church, the devil got a church. Amen. God got tongues, the devil got tongues. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. That's why you can't be caught up in the, the outward appearance Amen. of stuff and get right. caught up in that type of job right. because you'll think it's God. Amen. But you got to draw the spirit and see whether it be of God. Oh, God. You got to be able to look at an individual and discern whether or not it's God. Amen. Just like Jesus Christ got a doctrine. Yeah. The Bible said you got to buy in the doctrine of Christ. Just like Christ got a doctrine, the devil got a doctrine. Amen. The Bible says seducing spirits yes. and doctrines of devil. Yes. Yeah. Not only do we got a church, but we got a church with bylaws, standards, yeah. rules, regulations, yeah. and every rule and regulation that he got tries to imitate and mirror Jesus, but with minor changes. Amen. Amen. Minor changes. Yeah. And the minor changes are things that contradict the word of God. Word of God. Yeah. That's right. So what he does is he'll create a church just like Jesus got a church, but yet his rules will just be a little different. Yeah. God's church says a woman that prays and prophesies must have her head covered. His church will say you ain't got to put nothing on your head. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. God's church said, you still got the trust in modest apparel. His church said, whosoever will, let them come. Not only let them come, but come and stay as you are. Uh -huh. right. So now you come in the house of God, looking any kind of way, dressing any kind of way, talking any kind of way, doing any kind of thing, uh -huh. and still say it's the church. Amen. 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 It is a church, but it's not the church of Jesus Christ. That's right. All his doctrines contradict the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how we know whether or not it's truly God or not. Amen. Not by the miracles, not by the signs, not by the wonders, but what are they standing for? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Verse number 15 said what, brother? Therefore, therefore, it is no great, it is no great thing if his, if his, his ministers also and not only, not only do God got ministers, he got ministers. That's yeah. right. Everybody that stands behind a pulpit with a robe on, a clergy collar, and, and, and a cross around their neck is not of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I, I don't care what kind of robe it is. They can wear the bishop miters, wear the bishop rings, and all that type of foolishness, and it does not mean that they are of God. Amen. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. Also be transformed as the ministers of as righteousness. the ministers of righteousness. They'll get up and talk about holiness all day long yeah. and still live like the devil. Amen. Amen. Still contradict the word of God. Amen. Amen. And they are deceiving the masses of the people. Amen. There are things that they know, and the Bible is right. I was listening to a preacher yesterday, and when I listened to the preacher, he sat there and he told the people certain things in the scriptures that he knew was right. And what he was doing was he was preaching a message, and the message that he was preaching was called Trapped Outside of the Veil. Wow. And he's preaching this message in order to show that the church that follow certain guidelines and rules and regulations, they are religious. Mm. And he said we're religious and those that uh, do 
all white on first Sundays and all this type of stuff. Make you think that it's church. He got into talking about communion and some other foolish stuff. He got into all this stuff and said it was religion and God hates religion and all this type of stuff. But he used this type of stuff to try to prove how that somehow the church has transformed and changed from their standards and changed from their ways. And he used scripture My Lord. to try to defy other scriptures yes, to prove his point. So he said they get on us about wearing tattoos and allowing people to come in here with tattoos. He said, but the same Bible teaches us women that you can't come into the house of God with pearls. And that you can't come in the house of God with dangling earrings. But what happened was, what stopped me in my tracks was that he knew the truth about it, but yet still allowed it. My Lord. And he tried to use it. He said that the Bible said that you can't come in the house of God with pearls and dangling ornaments, but yet he allows it in the church. And he used that to try to say, well, if y'all ain't going to stop wearing your pearls and your uh, dangling earrings, then we're not going to stop them from coming in here with tattoos. But how do you use unrighteousness in order to try to uh, 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 uplift other unrighteousness? Right, right. How do you try to use something that is unrighteous to justify another unrighteous deed? Amen. So that let me know that these individuals hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. That brother knows the truth about the scripture, but is purposely ignoring it. My Lord. Purposely overlooking it. Purposely not obeying it and purposely not teaching his people about it. How do you do that? How do you know what the scripture says and what it means, but you will not teach your people? And you let your wife come in the house of God with dangling earrings, with pearls, and you know the Bible forbids it. Mm-hmm. And it's not Old Testament scripture that you're using. You're using New <laughs> Testament doctrine. My Lord. That was given by the apostles. Given by the apostles for the church and you know it's New Testament and you still avoid it and then get up and call yourself an apostle. You are an apostle. A false one. That's right. Amen. 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 You're a false apostle. A deceitful worker. The brother that preached and said this calls himself an apostle. He's an apostle. But yet you know the word of God says something and you refuse to teach it to the people. So you hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. My Lord. Know it. Believe it. But won't teach it. And you know why? They won't teach it for money and membership. Yeah. They know if you really set down rules and regulations like that, folks ain't going to want to come to the church. Folks ain't going to want to get their money. Oh, well, you know. We do all that, you know, look like that. Folks ain't gonna come. But that ain't the truth. If you preach the word of God right and preach it with someone, knowing that folks will come regardless. Amen. And the power of God has the ability to transform anybody's life. That's right. See, our problem is we're too busy dealing with the delivery of the word of God versus the power of the word of God. Amen. The delivery of the word of God and the power of the word of God is two different things. Amen. The power of the word of God has the ability. To change anybody. Amen. See, but when you're dealing with the deliverance and you're dealing with personification of how you look it, and you're too busy in personalities in the church, you deny the power of God. Amen. So therefore, you have a form of God in this, but you're denying the power. Amen. What's the purpose to have a form but no power? Amen. You look and act like church, but there's no power in the church. Amen. Amen. The power of God has the ability to change everybody. Everybody. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. The power of the gospel has the ability to change anybody. Oh, thank you. It can you change Lord. Paul. It can change anybody. Anybody. Amen. That's the truth. Paul is a blasphemer, a persecutor of the church. He going around killing folk. If he was able to be transformed, anybody can be anybody. changed. Anybody. He was a murderer. But not only a murderer. He was an accessory to murder. He was standing there when they stoned Stephen. Amen. That's right. He didn't stop him. He didn't get involved. 
He was there when they killed him. But now after Stephen is dead and you were an accessory to murder, God's word now comes to you and it transforms your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank now you, the one that you were persecuting, now you're preaching. Yes. So he go from persecuting him to preaching him. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. It has the ability to change. When you put your confidence solely upon the word of God, it can change anybody. Anybody. Amen. Nobody's beyond God's reach. That's right. I don't care what sin they're in. Amen. I don't care what dilemma they're in. Amen. There is nobody beyond the reach of God. Nope. Amen. Nobody. Nobody. Amen. There's no sin that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot cover. That's right. Y'all quiet again. Amen. Amen. There is no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot cover. That's right. Amen. I don't care what it is. That's right. See, we, we get in the church and we start acting like there's some stuff that is too big to be covered by the blood. Oh, so God can cover up lying, but he can't cover up homosexuality. Come on now. Come on. He can cover it. Yes, he can. He can cover up drunkenness, but he can't cover up a crackhead. Come on now. Y'all can be quiet on your That's right, you're telling the truth. The blood of Jesus Christ can do whatever. That's right. All power. If we can't live in the power of God, the same power, the, the same blood, that and the same stripes that can cure cancer can cure AIDS. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Amen. We, we ain't got to sit here and put things in different categories. That's the right. power has the ability to change and Amen. transform. situation is. His power is predicated upon where it came from and that blood came from heaven. Amen. And that blood has the ability to wash away every sin. Everyone. Amen. It has a possibility. It has the ability to wash away every sin. Didn't you hear the Bible say, and such were some of you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If it didn't have the ability to wash away sin, you wouldn't be sitting in the church today with your nasty sin. Because there was some stuff that you used to think about, some stuff that you used to do. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, there's some yeah. stuff that you're still thinking about doing right now. Yeah. That the blood of Jesus Christ is still coming. Yeah. 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 Come on now. Yeah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing that is out of the reach of God. Yeah. Okay. Up anything, any party. Yes, he can. I don't care what they do. Amen. I don't care how they're acting. But the fact of the matter is, we gotta let God be God. Yes. Too many of us trying to be God in other people's lives, that's and that's why we done ran so many people away from the church. Amen. Because we were trying to be God, and we gave them their judgment Amen. before God gave it to them. Amen. 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 We judged them before God gave them their judgment. Yes. That's right. Yep. Amen. Amen. You going to hell. Yeah. You going to hell. You know that you going to hell. The Bible did not say they were going to hell. He said if they don't repent. That's right. Amen. That's right. See what we do is we have made the judgment. If you don't stop drinking, you're going to hell. It's not whether they stop drinking, it's if they don't repent. Amen. You got to repent of what you're doing. That's you got right. to say if you don't repent of that, That's you right. will be lost. God's objective is that all men will repent. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's his will. Yes. As long as they got breath in their body, they got opportunity. Yes. Right. And nobody has the right to tell somebody when they should repent. Amen. They'll repent when they get ready. When they're ready. That's right. All that we got to do is keep preaching and keep putting it out there before the people. Yes. Keep letting them know if you die like this, what's going to happen? If you die unrepentant, this is what's going to take place. Yes. Amen. But you got to let people get to the point in place in their life where they get up and they're willing to finally give it up. That's right. Because right. if you make them give it up prematurely, they'll go back to it. Amen. Amen. That's right. If you make them stop doing it, they'll go back to it. Amen. You know how we say, you know, if you don't, you could, you be making people dress like we want them to dress, act like we want them to act, and they do it as long as they're in our presence. Yeah. 
They'll do it as long as we're in our presence. They'll follow it. They'll obey it. But the minute you leave out of their sight, they're going to do what they want to do. Amen. I done seen it too many times. I done seen individuals walk and say, look and say, act and say, doing all this stuff, dressing holy. And the minute their heart's been died. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Husband died. All of a sudden, I ain't talking about what I don't know. I'm talking about in my own family. Uh -huh. Husband died. Next thing you know, they're going to put wigs on and earrings and lipstick and shorts uh -huh. on. And you looking like you old almost in the grave yourself. And you done went backwards. That's the truth. Yeah. Who was you doing this for? That's right. To let you know she was doing it for her husband. Yeah. She yeah. wasn't doing it for God. Amen. Because her husband told her to do it. Uh-huh. And that's the same way with us. We got religion that we only got from our family members. Amen. 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 Daddy Mama told me to do it. Told me to do this. I just like this. But it ain't in your heart to do it. And if it's not in your heart to do it, when mom and daddy die, you gonna be off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 